In this video we are going to talk about operational amplifiers. When I learned to use operational amplifiers, I virtually forgot everything I knew about discrete circuits. Uh, these are so versatile uh, as long as you stay within their parameters. They don't work very well at high frequencies, but in DC circuits, audio circuits, and perhaps some lower range, lower frequencies of radio circuits, you can do virtually anything you can think of uh, with these. An operational amplifier is an integrated circuit. I have a couple of packages here. Let's see if we can take a look at this. I don't think we'll get this too well in focus. You, ah, We might be able to see it. Let's flip that over. We can actually see the numbers on there, I'll bet. This is an LM324 Motorola circuit. And right next to it, let's get this one flipped over so we can see it. Let's see, gotta get that turned over. Might be a little harder to see. Let's see if we can get, oh, it looks like it's gonna focus on it. This is a TI circuit, a MC1458, which is the same series as the LM358 circuit. And uh, this circuit, uh, the 14 pin package, has four op amps in it, and the eight pin package has two op amps in it. And there's other packages too, such as uh, TO5, uh, different surface mount types of packages, and uh, some have only one op amp and some have more, and there are specialty op amps for certain types of circuits that we'll discuss a little bit later. An operational amplifier is essentially a differential amplifier with one of the outputs coupled to a high gain DC amplifier. But that's not important. What's important to know is what rules does the circuit follow? And for that we are going to look at the LGM model. I'm going to start by drawing the LGM model of the operational amplifier. We start out with the operational amplifier symbol, a triangle with a single output, and two inputs. One is labeled plus, the other one is labeled minus. This one is the inverting input. This one is the non-inverting input. And that's the basic layout of an operational amplifier. For the LGM model, I'm going to move these symbols to the outside just for convenience to make room inside. And what we have is the inputs going to voltmeters. And the output goes to a battery. Variable battery connected to the output, where somewhere around the middle is connected to ground. And this is the basic LGM model of the operational amplifier. We have the inverting input, the non-inverting input, and the output. The output is connected to a variable battery, which is connected to ground somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be, but uh, for this example we will. And the inputs are connected to two voltmeters. And of course we have inside, controlling everything, a little green man whose job is to control the battery. But he watches these voltmeters. And his job is to make the voltage of this battery whatever it takes to make those two voltages equal. More specifically, his job is to watch the meters, and if he sees the voltage at the inverting input higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input, he will crank his voltage down. And let's put a little down arrow next to this one to remind us that that's the way it goes. And he will keep cranking that voltage down until one of two things happens. Either these two voltages become equal, or he reaches whatever bottom limit he has on that battery, which we will determine later. On the other hand, if he sees the voltage at the non-inverting input higher than the voltage at the inverting input, his job is to crank the output voltage upwards. And we'll put a upward arrow here to remind this of that function. He sees a higher voltage at the non-inverting input than the inverting input. He will crank the voltage upwards until one of two things happens. Either these voltages become equal or we reach whatever limit is set. Op-amp is powered by two power supplies usually. 
We'll talk about exceptions later. Let's make this one positive 10 volts for the positive supply and minus 10 volts for the negative supply. That sets the limits for this battery. So let's take a look at what happens if we put some real voltages here. Let's put plus 1 volt here and plus 2 volts here. And watch what happens. Okay, he sees 1 volt, 2 volts. The voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input. That means he's going to crank his voltage down. Once again, until one of two things happens. Either these become equal or he hits his bottom limit. Well, there's nothing connecting the output to the input, so nothing he does to this battery is going to change what happens at the inputs. So let's watch what happens. This voltage is higher than that voltage, therefore the output voltage is going to be cranked downwards, and it's going to keep on going down until he hits his bottom limit, which is going to be minus 10 volts. So there it goes, minus 10 volts. Sorry boss, that's as far as I can go. That's what we have. Now let's make a change to where this voltage is the higher voltage. Now the voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input. His instructions are to crank his voltage upwards until either these become equal or he reaches his upper limit. Well, nothing he does at the output is going to have an effect on the input, so he's going to keep going up and up and up until he reaches positive 10 volts and, sorry boss, that's as far as I can go. So that's what's going to happen if we have this basic circuit. But let's say there's something, some kind of feedback. I don't want to be specific about this right now. We'll see what this can be in the upcoming circuits. But there's some feedback so that as this output voltage changes, one of these changes, one or both. So now, let's say he sees that at the non-inverting input we have 3 volts, the inverting input 2 volts, the voltage is higher here than here, therefore he'll crank his voltage up. But let's say when he got to plus 7.5 volts, this had gone up to plus 3 volts. Now the two voltages are equal, so he will stop cranking up his voltage and will stay there at 7.5 volts. So that's the basic idea of how the operational amplifier works. I've taken some liberty with this and I'm going to make it a little more realistic because actually we cannot reach this voltage on the output. So let's put it back to where this voltage is a little lower. It doesn't need to be much lower. We have three volts here, two volts there. He's going to crank the voltage up until he gets to his upper limit, up and up and up. There's no feedback, let's take out the feedback. So he keeps going up until he reaches his upper limit, which is on a typical op amp is going to be about probably 9.5 volts. That's as far as he can go. So that's a more realistic uh, scenario there. And once again, if we change it so that this voltage is lower, now the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input. The voltage is going to be cranked downward. Once again, no connection, no feedback to the inputs, so nothing's going to change here. So he's going to go all the way down until he reaches probably about minus 9.5 volts for a typical op amp. And that's as far as you can go there. There are some notable exceptions to this rule. I don't know of any op amps to where you can reach the positive supply, but I know of two op amps that are specifically designed so you can reach this negative voltage. They are the LM 324 and the LM358. The 324 is a four op amp package. Uh, it's a 14 pin package with four op amps in it and the 358 is a eight pin package with two op amps in it. And their claim to fame is that you can actually get down to this voltage. So if we're using one of these two op amps we can actually get down to the lowest voltage. These particular op amps are useful if you have a circuit where you need to reach zero volts but you don't want two power supplies. We'll talk about them later in some practical applications.
So that's the basic operation of an op amp with the LGM model showing how it works. So once again, quick review. We have the two voltmeters and the battery. And the little green man watches the voltmeters and controls the battery. Now he doesn't need to know what the voltage of this battery is. He just needs to know what the voltmeters read and whether to crank that battery upwards or downwards. So let's look at a couple of scenarios again. If the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input, here we're only a hundredth of a volt difference, but yet this voltage is higher than that voltage, his instructions are to crank his battery down, and we'll keep cranking it down until either these voltages become equal or he hits his bottom limit. In this case it would be minus 10 volts, or actually minus 9.5 roughly, in a realistic scenario. But if this voltage becomes higher, now his instructions are to crank the output voltage up until either these voltages become equal or he hits his upper limit, which in this case would be about 9.5 volts. So that is the LGM model of the operational amplifier. In subsequent videos we will take a look at some typical circuit models for operational amplifiers and then some practical application.